It's Lumify Eye Drops. Lumify dramatically reduces redness. In one minute. And look at the difference. My eyes look brighter and whiter. For up to eight hours. It was love at first sight. With Lumify. Lumify. See for yourself. Tomorrow on E.T., Taylor Swift's Eras is here. Everything we know about her first tour in over four years. It's just a lot of a lot. Yeah. Plus. It's a younger, hipper, browner. Yes, I like that. Our exclusive on the hilarious set of Act Your Age. <laughs> Happening now. Severe storm potential tonight, some gusty winds, much colder air, and maybe even some snowflakes. Yes, you heard that right. I'll see you soon. A tree branch that fell in the zoo yesterday sent seven people to the hospital. One of them, a child, is still there in serious condition. Today we talk with a man who saw it happen and who rushed to help. San Antonio's housing market is shifting. Bidding wars aren't as common and homes are staying on the market a little bit longer. Coming up, what buyers and sellers can expect this spring. The News at 5 starts right now. And we start with those strong and noisy storms headed into our area late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Now for the very latest on what we can expect as these storms move closer to us, let's move to our meteorologist Adam Kasky. Adam, we got to go over the timing here. So when exactly are these storms going to start coming in? Really not until closer to midnight and 1 a.m. That's when you can expect the storms to start between now and then. Just comfortable, partly cloudy conditions, temperatures in the 70s. But notice when you look at our storm chances graphic here, 9 o'clock, 10% chance 11 o'clock. We're up to 30% by 1 a.m. All the way through 3 a.m. 70%. So the most widespread coverage coming between about midnight and 4 a.m. That's what we're expecting for those strong to maybe even severe thunderstorms and still some lingering showers and storms through the morning commute 7 a.m. 50% coverage and then by 9 a.m. We're talking 40%. So you don't have anything to worry about until closer to midnight and that's when the loud and noisy thunderstorms are likely to develop and we mentioned the chance for some severe storms straight line winds of potentially 60 70 miles per hour and even large hail one and a half inches in diameter can't be ruled out those are the primary threats with those thunderstorms later on tonight there is the off chance of an isolated torna tornado but it's straight line winds and hail and i know we all want to know is it going to hail in my neighborhood I wish we could tell you right now unfortunately the science isn't there yet we won't know where the hail is going to fall until that hail making storm actually develops. We'll take a look at the future cast, talk about some non thunderstorm winds and even the chance of a wintry mix in just a bit. And with all that weather coming in, keep in mind traffic could be a mess tomorrow morning. Right now it is the usual slowdown 281 and loop 410. So if you're headed that direction, take your patience with you. You hear that? Yeah, new at five, a child still in the hospital after a tree fell in the San Antonio Zoo yesterday. Now, aside from that child, six other people were hurt. A university hospital spokesperson says that they're now out of the hospital. This is cell phone video captured the moment that that tree fell, and you can hear that panic as bystanders rush to help. Now, now the family who caught that tree falling on camera is telling us what it was like. Now, our Garrett Berger sat down with the man whose family witnessed it all. Chris Ryan and his family have been visiting from Houston on spring break, like so many of the people that are here today. He said he heard a sound like firecrackers and turned around in time to see an enormous branch fall. The tree fell over. Video taken by Ryan's wife and stepdaughter shows the immediate aftermath. Screams fill the air as bystanders rush to help the people trapped beneath, including Ryan, who can be seen in the gray shirt. An arborist told KSAT that a branch like this one could weigh between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds. One lady that I was helping with others um, was screaming, you know, my baby, you know, our child, and, and uh, obviously, understandably, quite distraught. We were able to get her up, and then shortly thereafter, I believe her child was brought from underneath another tree branch. Ryan said staff from the zoo quickly came in. He gathered his family and left the area, 
not wanting to be in the way. Ryan told us he hadn't noticed any big gust of wind beforehand that may have caused the branch to come down. The zoo's president and CEO has released a statement saying they're investigating what caused the breakage so they can prevent this, quote, unusual event from happening again. I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. The owner of a used car lot on the north side arrived at work this morning and found his office ransacked and a truck stolen. It happened at Landmark Motors on Broadway near Loop 410. The owner says he got to work around 6 a.m. That's when he noticed the metal gate was wide open. SAPD says someone broke through a window, cut the electricity, then broke into his office. The owner says the thieves stole a 2011 white Chevrolet Duramax pickup and smashed through his gate. I immediately noticed one of the vehicles, one of the diesel trucks was gone. So I thought it was simply a car theft until I got into the office. Apparently got the keys to the truck and drove off with whatever they stole. I haven't done an inventory yet. And in the first time Barrow has had to deal with thieves, he says thieves have broken into his office before. He's also had tools stolen, catalytic converters cut. Barrow says he's put up fencing cameras and lights to try to help. Now, the San Antonio Police Department wants to show you something. Their new photos connected to a shooting death on the northwest side from over a year ago. So here are those pictures. Just take a look. Investigators believe that the man you see wearing a jacket with white lapels there on your screen, gray pants and light colored shoes in the center of everything. He's a person of interest in the shooting death of 25 year old Arturo Pozos. Now that shooting happened February 13th of last year in the 4900 block of Northwest Loop 410. Police say that Pozos had just left a club near Loop 410 in Vance Jackson. Pozos pulled into a parking lot of a nearby Chili's restaurant when someone shot and killed him. If you know anything about what happened, call SAPD. The number that they want you to call is on your screen. It's 210-207-7635. A man claims he was shot during an attempted robbery overnight, but police aren't sure if he's telling the truth. The incident happened around 1230 this morning in an apartment complex in the 800 block of North Frio Street. That's near Rivas Street and I-10. According to police, the victim told officers two men tried to rob him when one pulled out a gun and shot him in the foot. He was able to get back to his apartment to call for help. SAPD searched the area but didn't find any suspects. The victim was taken to University Hospital. He's expected to recover. Officers tell us they aren't sure if a robbery actually happened. San Antonio police looking for the person who stabbed a man during a fight on the southeast side. This happened just before 1.30 this morning in the 1800 block of Goliad Road. That's near Clark Avenue and Hot Wells Boulevard. Officers say that a 25-year-old got into a fight with another man in a gray hoodie near a dollar store when he was stabbed. According to the police report, the victim was trying to get back his belongings from a nearby homeless encampment. Now, the victim is expected to be okay. Bidding wars, sticker shock, rock bottom mortgage rates. That's what the housing market looked like during the pandemic. But now that mortgage rates are six and seven percent. Things have changed. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris reports, that may just help buyers. Derek Aguilar is house hunting for his mom again. Last summer, they just gave up. Prices were high, and yeah, people were outbidding us. So we'd, uh, we'd put in an offer, we'd be in uh, a little over asking, and uh, somebody else would come in even further over asking. The wild pandemic housing market is calming down. Last month, existing home sales dropped again, down 28% compared to last year. The median price, flat at $300,000. Evidence prices are moderating. Homes are taking longer to sell, two months instead of weeks, and some sellers reducing prices. Last spring, sellers were getting on average 101% of their asking price. Last month, it was more like 93%. The market started shifting in July, so now our buyers have a lot more opportunities to get the home that they're looking for. Realtor Monique Gardner says buyers now have more power. We are past the 3% interest rates, multiple, multiple offer situations, and so it's really educating our clients right now. With spring, sales are picking up. She says updated homes priced right will sell, but. If it's not the top most desirable home, sellers off the bat are already offering to pay their closing costs. And there's another break for buyers with FHA loans. Next week, new rules cut mortgage insurance costs by 30%. As for the Aguilars, they're seeing more options, more hope. We're hoping not to be in the same situation as over the summer. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News.
Now in international news, tensions between the U.S. and Russia remain high after new video shows two Russian fighter jets interfering with a U.S. surveillance drone. The Pentagon releasing this video today. Leaders say the Russian jets sprayed fuel on the drone while in international airspace. And then one of the jets goes up rapidly before colliding with the drone's propeller, crashing it into the Black Sea. Both countries are eager to recover the remains of the $30 million unmanned craft. We are quite confident that whatever, uh, whatever was of value is no longer of value. The United States does not seek conflict with Russia. We do not seek escalation with Russia. So what does Russia say? Well, its military claims that its pilots did not come into contact with the unmanned aircraft. It's insisting that it instead lost control as a result of sharp maneuvering. Now to a pretty disturbing trend. New federal data shows the death rate due to pregnancy complications is rising. Data from the CDC shows there were more than 1,200 maternal deaths two years ago. that were also 33 deaths for every 100,000 live births in 2021. The report also notes significant racial disparities mirroring the impact the pandemic had on communities of color and highlighting inequality in health care. People who are, were black, are black or Hispanic were disproportionately affected by uh, the COVID pandemic. And, you know, that disparity now is presenting itself in maternal death rates as well. Now, the CDC's data shows the maternal death rate for black women was over two and a half times higher than the rate for white women. Now to the growing concerns surrounding U.S. banks and one of Europe's largest banks, which would be Credit Suisse. Its stock price plunged to an all-time low yesterday, but today... It rebounded. That was after news that the lender would seek a multi-billion dollar loan from the Swiss Central Bank to ensure investor confidence. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Amid more turmoil across the banking industry, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen speaking before the Senate Finance Committee, assuring lawmakers and the American people that the U.S. banking system is still strong. Our banking system is sound and that Americans can feel confident that their deposits will be there when they need them. Yellen saying taxpayer money is not being spent to ensure deposits in the now failed Silicon Valley and Signature Banks. First Republic trying to shore up confidence following the collapse. The bank's stock now up more than 20 percent. According to Bloomberg and the Wall Street Journal, J.P. Morgan now working with Citigroup, Bank of America, Wells Fargo and others to provide a lifeline to First Republic. The bank's expected to deposit $30 billion. Meanwhile, overseas, the stock price of Credit Suisse, one of Europe's biggest banks, plunging 24 percent to an all time low Wednesday. However, in trading on Thursday, its stocks rebounded. They are now fighting for their life after a mass exodus of investors, fearing that that bank could face a similar fate to SVB. Bank Banks are just facing that harsher reality today than they were a year ago before the collapse. The firm, which also has a big presence here in the U.S., announcing that it will borrow up to $54 billion from the Swiss Central Bank to shore up its liquidity and investor confidence. There is some good news when it comes to the larger economy and inflation, with new data showing retail sales fell only moderately in February and wholesale prices posted an unexpected decline. But later this year, we could see things change with most analysts forecasting some sort of recession because of the inflation we're already seeing. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Still ahead on the News at 5, a spring break camp for local students is letting them learn from Hollywood writers. Hear from a writer who's a San Antonio native and a student who says the camp inspired her to keep following her dream. Coming up next. Also, do you have YouTube TV? Well, it's going to get a lot more expensive. Find out by how much and when you're going to have to pay more. That's after the break. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom, and here's a story we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Tejano Fanfare has kicked off at Market Square, a huge event that draws big crowds every year. But this year... The weather not exactly outdoor festival friendly over the next couple of days. What organizers and vendors are doing to prepare for much colder temperatures. We'll see you for that and more today on the News at 6. Myra, looking forward to it. Now let's talk about this. Another streaming service is raising its rates. 
you knew it was coming. The price for YouTube TV is jumping from $65 a month to 73, which is more than a 12% increase. YouTube TV says that it's because of rising content costs. New members are going to see the higher price starting Thursday. Existing customers are going to pay the new rate starting April 18th. Some area students getting inspiration from Hollywood. They're writers and they're helping these students with a creative writing camp. UTSA brought in four writers from Hollywood to help teach students their screenwriters spring break program. One of the writers is Raymond Arturo Perez. He is a San Antonio native who worked on Selena, the series. Perez says he wants the students to follow their dreams and work with other creative minds. Find your fellow creatives in San Antonio and and start collaborating. It's such a tricky thing, writing scripts, uh, kind of getting into that profession, uh, but definitely being here and talking to these amazing uh, people and learning a bit more about it has definitely been very encouraging. It wasn't just UTSA students who got to participate in the two-day event. Students from Alamo Colleges, Northwest Vista, and local high schools also got to join in. I love hearing about stuff like that, right? Because it's such a hard industry to break into, and now they're getting an opportunity to hear from a real pro. Awesome. Speaking right. of hearing from a real pro. I know, but well, we this? need we need his expertise here. 516 right now, 83 degrees, Adam, and boy, are we looking at a swing. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I can't help it. It's just one of those situations. You know, welcome to uh, South Central Texas. Yeah in March. Yes. Big swings on the way. A lot to talk about, a lot to get into, but overall keep this in mind. This is going to be some really good, much needed moisture for us over the next several days, but get ready to bundle up. We're talking sweater weather and jackets back. All right, here are main headlines. Strong to severe storms overnight tonight. We talked about that before, especially by midnight through about 5 a.m. That's when we're most likely to have the potential for straight line wind gusts, 60 to 70 miles per hour and maybe even some damaging hail. Then turning cold and windy behind the cold front that hits tonight, and you're gonna feel it tomorrow and especially into the weekend. And speaking of that colder air into the weekend, a little bit of rain could uh, mix with snow Saturday morning, especially in the hill country, but I don't think only in the hill country. So let's get right to it. Let's start off with a look at the radar. Not much out there. You saw in our live cam picture a mixture of sun and clouds, and that's what we have. It's beautiful. A few showers popped up in Lavaca County over the past couple of hours, and that was it. Here's the big picture. It's an active pattern. Of course, we have the rain on the warm side of this front that's stretching across the nation north to south and the snow indicated by these blue colors on the cold side of it. And right here on the leading edge of it into Dallas, that's where we've had some severe weather, large hail and severe thunderstorms closer to the DFW area, actually moving into Fort Worth and Dallas just over the past couple of hours. There you have it, those severe thunderstorms there. That's where the risk is right now. Coming on later tonight, that risk moves south into our neck of the woods. Here's our feature cast, and I think this one in particular, although not perfect, probably the best representation of what you can expect. We get to 9, 10 o'clock, still not a lot of development out there, but by midnight, 1 a.m., that's when the cold front drops in and it should activate with just enough instability in our atmosphere and we'll see those more widespread showers and thunderstorms start to develop. Then we get to 2, 3 a.m., Still, a lot of activity becoming fairly widespread across our area. Pockets of heavy rainfall, some pockets of strong to severe storms. Again, the straight line winds, 60 to 70 miles per hour possible, and even large hail, potentially one to two inches in diameter. I know we all want to know, is it going to hail in my neighborhood? We can't tell you. We don't have that answer. And if anybody does, they're making it up, honestly. The science isn't there yet. We don't know until those hail-making storms develop then we can tell you where they're headed. So have the KSAT Weather Authority app handy and ready to go tonight because we will be live on it and even on air at times. Anyway, back to the future cast, 4 a.m. still widespread, soaking rainfall, embedded thunderstorms. And for the first part of the commute, we'll still have it widespread. Notice by 7 a.m., just dotting the landscape, 8, 9 a.m., still just some hit or miss showers. Rain chances the rest of the week, they spike again Friday night into Saturday. And Saturday morning, that's when we could have that light wintry mix, some wet snowflakes mixing in with the rain, even in parts of the San Antonio, you know, north side of town. Don't be surprised if you get a few wet snowflakes. 
You won't be able to make a snowman with it. Just more of one of those gee whiz situations. And basically think of it as white rain. No extra impact from it. But in the hill country, there could be a little frosting on some of the grass. That would be Saturday morning. Look at these temps. 93 in Catula. Can you see the cold front? We're talking 30s in Amarillo right now. Morning temperatures dropping down to 42 tomorrow morning, then down to 36 on Saturday morning. Tomorrow afternoon, we make it up to 52 degrees. So most of the day tomorrow spent in the 50s with those high wind gusts over starting tonight with the cold front, 45 mile per hour gusts. So something to keep in mind, non thunderstorm wind gusts howling out there. And here's a really quick look at the seven day forecast. We'll get more into that rain snow mix possibility for Saturday coming up at six. But bottom line, a damp, cloudy weekend with highs near 50, not warming up to the middle of next week. All right. Thank you, Adam. Weather change in spurs, not so much. Not so much, right? But I'll tell you what, the way that game ended in regulation yeah. last night with that alley-oop dunk, it was a sight to see. It was awesome. Too bad the Spurs lost in overtime, but still, that oop is something to talk about. And in March Madness, is UT feeling any pressure playing as a two seed? Coming up. That awesome alley-oop slam dunk from Malachi to Keldon sent the Spurs and Mavs to overtime in big board sports. <laughs> Dallas at San Antonio last night was a great back and forth game with a wild fourth quarter with 1.8 seconds to go and down two. Keldon Johnson went to the free throw line looking to tie the game, but he missed them both. The second one on purpose looking for a rebound and put back, but Dallas grabbed the board instead. Then Maxi Kleber looking to get the ball inbounds, throws it over his teammates and out of bounds. Turnover Dallas, Spurs ball, timeout San Antonio. That brings us back to the alley oop. Malachi Branham to Keldon Johnson tying the game at 121 and forcing overtime. That was a great play executed to perfection, but the Mavs outscored the Spurs in OT 16 to seven, including a 13 0 run to seal the deal. Mavs win 137 128 in OT, but let's talk about that oop from Malachi to Keldon. Um, yeah, I saw him wide open, and I just, he said, he said, just throw it at the rim. Throw it at the rim. He dunked it, so it was great execution. Great timing. It was an amazing pass by Malachi. Uh, it's, he couldn't have passed any better. Just going through a full speed, and I felt like we got him on their toes and then slipped out, and it was right there. And, you know, I got a great pass, and, you know, the rest of it was history. Spurs will host the Grizzlies tomorrow night at 7 at the AT&T Center. Now, star guard John Morant will not be with the Grizzlies tomorrow night. That's because he was suspended eight games without pay for conduct detrimental to the league. The discipline is in response to Morant's live streaming of a video on March 4th in which he is holding a firearm in an intoxicated state while visiting a Denver area nightclub. In men's college basketball, number two, Texas will face number 15, Colgate, in the Midwest region. First run action tonight. Horns guard Marcus Carr was asked how much pressure is there on the higher seeds since fans often pull for the underdog? You know, we respect our opponent fully. We understand how good of a team Colgate is, and um, we're preparing for them just like we would prepare any, you know, any Big 12 team. So I don't feel like there's going to be any pressure um, in terms of that. We don't take them lightly at all. Texas and Colgate will tip tonight at 625. We will be right back after the break. Right, there's a look at those storm chances again for tonight. Nothing this evening. It's once we're in bed and we're talking midnight and especially 1 a.m through 5 a.m. That's our primary time frame for the showers and even some severe storms possible. We'll be live on the KSAT Weather Authority app and we're going to have more coming up at 6.